So today we're looking at and reflecting on 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7. Um, and Ruth's sharing the slide with us. So 1 Corinthians says, and I'm sure you've all heard of it, but let's, as I read it out, let's reflect on actually what God is saying to us of what is love. So love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. So I'm going to pray for us. Father, we, we bring before you today the topic that we're talking about, which is love. And your word so uh, intricately describes what true love is. And Father, so we pray as we speak today through how we can love and support families. I just pray, Lord, that these words would come through of how we can yeah, be patient and kind and not self-seeking, um, not easily angered in the way that we love and support families. And in turn, Father, I pray that we would model your love to those families that we're supporting, that they would be able to give that to their children as well. And we will see families loving their children the way that you ask us to love. So we give you this time, Lord, and I pray that it would be a fruitful conversation, inspiring, and that we'd walk away with fresh ideas of how to love and care for families. So we give this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Ruth to take us through today's topic. Wonderful. Thank you, Brani. Uh, hello, everybody. Terribly good to see you today. Um, it feels like ages since we've connected, and I'm so happy to see you all today. So thank you, Brani. For leading us through that check-in. So today's topic um, is at the heart of what we as Sukunya believe. Um, we see that the church plays such an important role of surrounding and caring and supporting families to enable them to provide what baby needs. And so today we're focusing on what baby needs, which is nurturing care. And this is part of a series of conversations we're going to be having over over the lunchtime conversations around unpacking the nurturing care framework. Um, the nurturing care framework has five different components and we are going to be looking at how we as a loving supporting community can help parents to provide these five components to their, for their children. And so if, I, if we look at this slide, we see that the nurturing care framework says that for all children to thrive and reach their potential, they need these components of good health, adequate nutrition, opportunities for early learning, security and safety, and responsive caregiving. And so today we are focusing on the third component around responsive caregiving. And to help just set the scene a little bit of this nurturing care framework, Nutrient Care Framework was developed by the World Health Organization, and it really helps us to understand what all children need. And we focus specifically on the first thousand days, but the Nutrient Care Framework is saying what all children need, and this um, expands beyond uh, the first thousand days. So we're going to watch a quick video to help set the scene for this Nutrient Care Framework. So I'm just going to share the video with you right now. As children, we don't just want to survive, we want to thrive and reach our full potential. All children need nurturing care from birth into adolescence. They need good health, good food, protection from harm, opportunities to learn, and caregivers who listen and respond to children's needs. Children need health relationships and support from their friends and family. And families also need support to give children the best start in life. All children need to be protected from violence and abuse. No child should be beaten at home or bullied on the playground. And no child should have to witness violence on the streets or in the family. Clinics, schools and youth groups need to work together help children make healthy choices and to protect themselves from drugs and teenage pregnancy. Children who cannot read will struggle to learn. So 
We need to make time to read every day and make sure children have books in the classroom and back at home. Schools and clinics should be child and family friendly, places where all children are treated with dignity and respect. Together, these five ingredients of nurturing care provide a strong foundation. They protect children from stress and they help children to thrive and reach their full potential so that they can do well at school, find a good job and help build a stronger economy and a more caring society. The good news is that South Africa is working together with countries from around the world to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. These 17 goals aim to end poverty and hunger, improve children's health and education, protect the environment and create a more peaceful and equal world. By working together, we can protect the planet for future generations and make sure that no child gets left behind. So this has given us a framework and I just, uh, my hope from today's conversation is that we would be able to go a little bit deeper in understanding what does this mean specifically in the first thousand days. The video mentioned other areas that are important and necessary for children, but we wanted to see within the first thousand days, how do we encourage, how do we help, how do we support responsive caregiving for parents? Um, and how do we help nurturing them provide nurturing care? So. What we see with responsive caregiving is that actually it is part of one of the five that if we had to actually pull it out is so key to the whole of the nurturing care framework. And it comes around the other needs that children need um, that in order for a, care, a child to receive what it needs, it needs a responsive caregiver who's observing and responding to the child and able to provide the child with good nutrition, with safety, with opportunities for learning and um, with good health. And so that's why we see that this responsive caregiving building block ensures that all the other things can happen and why it's where we're starting in the series because it's such an important building block. Um, so when we look at the church community, we see that as a local church community, we are able to help families to provide responsive caregiving. And so we see this responsive community around the caregiver, around the parent, to help them respond in that way. And so I hope that helps us to frame the conversation today of where we all fit into that, that as much as the video said, the, the community has a part to play. We've said that we as individual Christ followers at church goers have a part to play in coming around the family to help mom, help dad provide this responsive caregiving. So what does responsive mean? Uh, what do we mean by responsive caregiving? At the simplest level, it's love. How do, we, how do parents love their children? Um, but responsiveness speaks to this ability to, to be in tune with the child's cues, to um, be able to follow the child's lead, that it's able to understand what the child needs. And it's also through being able to engage with them with eye contact, with smiles, with cuddles, with gestures um, that before the child even learns to speak there's this engagement between the adult and the child um, it's being able to responsibly feed the child especially for low weight um, infants or infants that are ill that there's responsive feeding it's not just when um, on a schedule but we're able to respond to the child's needs and so we see that responsive caregiving is intrinsically built around a relationship and so at the heart of all of this is what is the relationship like between mom and baby, between dad and baby? How loving is this relationship? And so how can we help mom to support her to be healthy, that she in turn can provide that for her children? And so we see infants and young children are completely dependent on their caregivers and they need caregivers to recognize and respond to their needs not only nutritionally and safely, but for social engagement, cognitive stimulation, and emotional regulation and soothing. And effective caregivers observe their child's cues, 
interpret what the child wants and needs and respond consistently and appropriately. Um, caregivers provide the foundation for early learning by making this eye contact. So eye contact is a really important part of this. Um, following the child's gaze, talking to the child, taking turns, and this facilitates this early social and emotional development and promotes security that the child feels like there's a consistency in this relationship. I can trust this relationship. And so the question around how do we promote responsive caregiving? How do we encourage this type of thing? Um, one of it is really just observing caregivers and um, affirming when we see this type of behavior between the caregiver and the child, praising the, ch the caregiver that they feel confident, that they uh, feel like, yes, I've got this, this is good, and helping them identify enjoyable activities that they can do with their child um, every day through homemade toys, reading books, singing, dancing. Uh, this can strengthen the relationship between them. And so we want to also increase the amount of time that parents spend with their children so that they're able to build this type of relationship with their child, where that bond between mom and baby, dad and baby is strong, that they are able to read the cues and engage with their child in a positive way. So that's a, a very brief summary of responsive caregiving, and I'm going to hand over to Bryony to take the conversation further. Thanks, Ruth. So I'm going to go back to the scripture that we read, um, 1 Corinthians 13. And if we reflect on that, the Bible has given us a beautiful standard of how to love. Um, but the thing is, is we're not perfect. And we don't love like this probably ever or definitely not all the time. So, and I know as parents, we can find peace and security in knowing that God loves us this way. And it's through the Holy Spirit that enables us to love like this. And it's only possible because we have been loved by God this way. But for babies, babies also need love for growth. Um, and so when we look at 1 Corinthians 13, um, in a way from baby's uh, perspective, it's love is not merely a feeling, but rather a range of actions, decisions, and, and postures. Um, and so if we look at it, that baby needs, what baby needs from caregivers is it needs patience. So love is patient. Baby needs kindness, so love is kind. Um, it does not envy, it does not boast, it's not proud. It, these are the qualities of um, a caregiver to their child that a baby needs to feel uh, loved. Um, so if we think of how um, it's love is not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, and it keeps no records of wrong. Um, it delights, uh, rejoices in the truth and does not delight in evil. Uh, it protects and trusts and hopes and perseveres. If we think of those are the qualities of loving our children uh, that a parent can have, um, it's, we are given a perfect example of how to love. But I know parents often feel the guilt uh, that they have not loved like this. I know we, for me as well, <laughs> you know, I, I don't love like this. I just have to read the first one, love is patience, and already don't feel like you're hitting hitting all the other things of being kind and it's not boasting. So it really does challenge us as parents. Um, how can we love like this? And we're not wanting parents to feel guilt, but rather to know that they are loved like this. Um, and it's because that they are loved by God like this, that they are able to love their children like this. Um, so I guess thinking about the parents in your context, um, where you live, um, are they loving or connecting with their babies in a way that can uh, show God's love? Um, and are they managing to, to love uh, their children the way that um, we speak in, in 1 Corinthians? But also are we as um, Sukunya champions or loving connectors, Christ followers here today, are we managing to love and connect with families in a similar way? So I just want to open up the floor and ask a question. Um, how are we managing to love and connect with families in your churches and in your context? Um, or what are some of the ways that you are uh, connecting with moms or encouraging mom and dad or responsibly caring for mom and dad that they then in turn are responsibly caring for their baby? Are there any stories amongst us of how? of some of the ways we are doing it or some of the ideas you might have of how we can do it. If you want to unmute yourself and uh, tell us, then that's great. Otherwise, if you want to put it into the chat box, please do. 
but I know many of you are connecting with families and you are loving families. Uh, Matapelo's story um, in the chat box shows that, uh, that you are loving families. So, and Sophie, I don't know if you're able to speak now, whether you would like to tell us some of the practical ways that you're encouraging mom and dad to care for their baby in a responsive way. Um, if Sophie is still traveling, does anybody else want to tell us what, what ideas you might have around encouraging mom and dad to responsibly care for their baby? Um, I think because of the age of my school, I've got a lot of young families, well, all young families, some who have had babies, and I'm seeing, you know, the, how they struggle with lack of sleep, pressures from their toddlers. So I've realized that there's, it's a very, I see it very rarely in a, in a group of parents and young families. And for me, it's just been like finding my spot using what I have and am, and possibly some life experience as well. Um, how can I step in and, and help these particular families? It's not necessarily as a church um, group, but it's, um, it's just really seeing struggle amongst um, young families juggling work and whatever. And it's sort of, for me, it's quite interesting that um, just yesterday, um, Jane sent out a thing for the first thousand days about the meeting and how we can connect and you have any ideas. So I sort of found I have got direction now, but I'd like to be involved in it more in a, in a church community. So that was quite encouraging for me where exactly I um, can go and direct what I have seen and what I want to be able to do. And just for an example, I, I bumped into a mom at gym a few weeks ago, her and her husband were there. And she said, I said, oh, where are the kids? She said, oh, please don't think that's terrible. We, we got a babysitter. And the fact that she felt guilty for that, because they just thought they'd go for gym and go to breakfast. And I, at that was sort of, I thought, oh, you know, remember that thing, you feel bad when you're with them because you're short-tempered, but you also need him a release. And it just reminded me, these are young families struggling and then dealing with guilt because they're fobbing their children off on something and they really shouldn't because you need to re-energize yourself as adults so that you can be strong and available for your children. So it, I just felt really sad, which has got me going to do, I've got a facility here. How can I do things for parents to be able to do those kind of things without feeling guilty or, yeah. So I feel there's a lot of movement coming towards me where I can possibly step in and be involved in something where parents can, have their time out, but not to feel guilty. Thanks, Leslie, for sharing. And I think um, you actually hit it quite well, and that's so many parents are feeling that guilt, but also um, young families are juggling so much now. Um, well, all families are juggling so much now with uh, the increase in stress that we're finding on families because of lockdown, but also just the expectations on, on moms and dads these days. Um, and as you say, guilt seems to be the first emotion that comes in and shame. Um, but you are right in saying that actually they need to care for themselves before they're able to lovingly care for their child. And I think that's something we've, we've said before is self-care is really important. You, you can't love someone if you're not uh, loving yourself and allowing God to love you too, right? And you, you will be giving from an empty, an empty space or empty cup. So I think it's... It's great that you're encouraging them to go and do that as a couple, also because it uh, unites them as, as parents. Um, but then also, as you say, encouraging them in other ways to connect with baby, that it's, um, as Ruth mentioned earlier, it's, it's the everyday moments that they can connect with baby. It doesn't have to be that they're, you're there 100% of the time and um, not taking care of themselves as well, but in the everyday moments, they can communicate and play with their babies. So whether it's when they're there for bedtime or for feeding or singing whilst they're doing the dishes, or I saw um, Sophie put in the chat box some, some great ways as well. She said singing and telling stories and making different facial expressions. Um, and it's about giving the baby the opportunity to respond back. So no matter how young the baby is. Um, and as we see, um, as you, uh, rightly said, Lizzie, is that when 
mom and dad are in a good space because they are taking care of themselves as well. They're able to respond in a healthy, loving way towards their baby. And that's ultimately what we're wanting to see is that mom and dad are loving their children in the way that 1 Corinthians 13 tells us to. Um, and so maybe just some other ideas around how we can model and encourage caregivers uh, around responsibly caring for their babies. Um, uh, Ruth mentioned many of them before, things like eye contact, smiling, cuddling, positive affirmation and positive words. So as we support mom and dad and encourage them in, in being responsive uh, caregivers, we can speak words of affirmation and words of praise and we can show smiles and eye contact as well with them and that in turn they will uh, show to their babies. Um, and it's just, uh, as you mentioned, it's, it's encouraging caregivers to develop, to develop safe spaces when they're with their children and have a rewarding relationship both within their marriage, within with their children. Um, yeah, and just using everyday opportunities to bond with baby. Um, I see uh, there's been, Mentona, you've said that other ways of loving our babies is giving them time and playing with them whenever we have time or space um, and letting them be themselves around us. Yeah, and that's exactly it, is, is giving them that opportunity to play. Play is a, um, an amazing a way of bonding and connecting with our children. And as Ruth showed us, um, simulation and opportunities for early learning, as well as the other building blocks, all for what we believe under the responsive caregiving uh, um, nurturing care block, because we feel that if you're responsive to your child, you will play with them. If you're responding to your child, you will feed them um, and you will give them uh, uh, good health when you take them to the doctor if they're sick. Um, I see, Sophie, you said parents often think that responsive parenting is something apart or something they need to do extra. And that every opportunity from bath time, feeding time is a great way to bond, love and play. And yep, that's exactly it. So if you think we, we tend to think, oh, no, you've got to do something else. And parents, as, as we've heard, feel shame and guilt because they're not doing that something else. Meanwhile, as you say, it's every opportunity. It's in the small things, um, just being able to talk to and uh, sing to and uh, pull funny faces and love your, your child. Um, so I'm going to ask what, a question of what are some of the obstacles or barriers for parents to engage well or responsibly care for their children? In your context where you are living or working, what are some of the barriers that you see parents having that they're not able to love and responsibly care for their children in this way? Pastor Siobhan, can I pick on you because I see you've got your video on. It's nice to see your face. <laughs> And in what you're doing in with Light Restoration Centre, what's what do you see as some of the barriers that families are facing that they can't care for their children or love their children? Um, yeah, it's bad that I'm the first one to comment on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I can think of um, busyness, meaning um, work and not having time and you need to come back home prepare for their food the washing of the children and everything so you don't have much time to look at them talk to them play with them and and at the last moment where you would get maybe that, those um, 30 minutes or so you are tired you want to sleep they still want to play and all that so those are the barriers but then, which I think also, it is also important that we, as much as we want to provide, but then we create some time also a try hard, understanding that um, caregiving for those children is as important as going out there to work and get some money. So, so because we, we tend to neglect that part because of we are saying we are struggling for them, for our Thank you, Pastor Sevonga. I think you, you're right, especially for fathers, uh, have that feeling that they need to provide, right? they need to earn the money to pay the rent and the food and the school fees, that they don't find the time to, to play with their children. So with that as an example, where you said busyness and coming home and then having to now prepare food, new bath time and get into bed, and then still go to bed early that they're not tired. What 
ideas? Do you have any ideas of how you can encourage a parent who's experiencing that and saying, no, I'm too busy. I've still got to cook dinner. I've still got to clean. I've still got to... Are there any ideas you could give them of how they can still love and respond to their child and play with their child in those moments? Uh -huh. it, I think for me, it starts with um, giving value or understanding um, or prioritize, so to speak, yeah, if I can put it that way. Because um, if I start by um, rushing to work, preparing, doing washing and everything, so I think in my mind, those are the, are the important things to start with. But then again, uh, that is why I'm saying it, it has to now come to a point where we understand that also taking care of those kids, uh, of the children, is as important as the other tasks that you have to do, or even more. Because what we, what we focus on doing on our daily basis, we do it because we want those um, children to be happy or, uh, or to thrive. But then we don't understand that we are actually missing the very important point of um, taking care of them first, and then the rest can be secondary. Thank you, Pastor. And I think what you've said is right, is that the people in a child's life, if we think of who the most important or what the most important thing is in a child's life, it is the people in their lives. So it's the caregivers, the mom, dad, the family around them. Um, and it's the interaction that they have with their parents, their mom or their dad or their grandparents or uncle and aunts, the interactions that they have and this is what builds the healthy um, relationships and the, the way that their brain develops to be able to have um, good and healthy relationships uh, when they're older. But perhaps some ideas, um, if you ever speak to families like that, you can challenge them and say, well, it, you do need to do the cleaning and you do need to do the washing and you do need to do the cooking. But how do you include baby in that? So maybe it's including baby in the mixing of the uh, you know the sauce or something so the baby can stir it or can you sing a song whilst you're cooking that baby can sing with you or um, uh, I've had little ones who, who love doing washing with you so you know you take it out out of the bath or and you're now ringing it they're carrying it for you to take it to hang it up it's including your your baby in those everyday moments that actually makes that bond uh, really close with with mum and dad and baby or whoever whoever the primary caregiver is um, and so maybe it's just giving some ideas to families like that um, I don't know if anybody else has some other ideas I see that uh, Sophie mentioned uh, mental health issues unemployment separation and divorce being some of the barriers um, or obstacles that parents have when they are trying to engage uh, or love their children um, and that's that's very true, Sophie. Um, those are some of the big and hard issues that our society are facing. Um, and it's how do we, even in those moments, still connect with our children and still uh, play with them and love them. And I think one of the, the biggest um, surprises to me when doing this work is I learned that, you know, peekaboo, you know, where you hide the, the cloth and then you go, where's, where's baby? And then you go, boo. Like just that alone, uh, that game teaches them about trust that you're going to come back and it teaches them uh, about play and it actually really encourages engagement and something as simple as that. I know that we could all do with, with babies um, and we could encourage parents to do that. Um, does uh, see Mantona says long working hours with parents can be an obstacle and that is also a reality of of our economy and um, that families are away from their children a lot. Um, and it's in that, in that opportunity that when they do have time with their children, it's, it's not feel shame and guilt that they're not there all the time during the day, but that when they do see their children, it's how do you use that time as quality time to bond and responsibly care for your child. Ruth, do you want to say something? I'm just as everybody's speaking, I'm remembering back to when I had little ones and how I was encouraged to almost forget about the dirty house, like forget about the dishes and actually to embrace those small moments. And I think, um, as Sia Bogo was saying, that prioritization, we, we get quite, we can get quite task driven, like I need to clean the house and I need to go to work and I need to do this. 
and the children just need to occupy themselves or they need to they they just and actually sometimes we need to let the dishes just sit in the sink and get down on the floor and play with the children and being being okay to give ourselves permission to do that um to find those five minutes just to be on the floor to get a book out and that um sometimes just what it takes is that five minutes of eye contact sitting down with a child in your lap and reading a book or singing a song and letting the dishes sit for later um or as somebody who's helping a mom go and wash his dishes so she can sit with her child um that we can find ways to encourage that that the parent doesn't feel this um torn between all the priorities that they have to do in order to ways that they can steal five minutes to make eye contact to be with their children Um, does anybody else have anything they'd like to, to add to that of ideas of how we can encourage mum and dad to love or responsibly care for their children? Um, because at the end of the day, I think um, the relationship or the loving bond between mum or dad is with baby is vitally important for um, healthy development of the baby. Um, and the way they learn later on in life or the way they interact with other people, the way they speak, um, all comes from those moments of when the primary caregiver has either cuddled them or smiled at them or spoken to them. Um, and I think often in the building blocks that we, we saw as there's five of them, is often we focus on the making sure that they get good nutrition, making sure they have good health, that they have a safe area, you know, our homes are safe, that we forget about the responsive caregiving one. Um, and we forget that actually love is the primary and relationship is the primary building block that allows all the other building blocks uh, to happen because all five don't exist in what we say is a vacuum. They don't exist on their own. All five have to work together. Um, and so it is the family or the primary caregiver being mom, dad, uncle, aunt, granny, whoever the person is who's with the child um, the majority of the time, uh, or so we say the family is the one that is responsible for the nurturing care and providing nurturing care to their child. Um, so really importantly, it's the, the nature of the relationship, so um, which makes the biggest difference in a child. So children everywhere need nurturing, caring relationships from a, from a parent or caregiver. Um, and it's this responsive nurturing care that really helps uh, develop the baby's brain and that's what it expects and depends on for that healthy development. Um, but also as an adult, we also need to be uh, feeling connected and responsibly cared for. Um, we, we need to be seen and we need to be engaged with, and in turn, we can then give it to somebody else. And um, as Leslie mentioned about that family needing to go and do some self-care and self-love to be able to then give to their children. It's, it, it, parents should not feel guilt or shame that they're taking that time out to, to care for themselves. And one way that we as uh, Christ followers or as the church can also do this is by, as we say, see mum or see dad. It's really engaging them as well. It's recognizing that none of us are perfect, um, that, but that we, they have a, a community of support around them um, so that they feel connected, that they can talk to you about the challenges that they're having. Um, and even if you have not experienced that challenge, being able to just be um, there as a listening ear, uh, it's about affirming them and saying, well done, you've got this, like you're doing a good job. You're the best parent that you can be to the, the child, that you are the mum or dad that the baby needs, the perfect mum or dad. Um, and it's with this that parents can then feel like they are net in a network, that they're in a community, they're in this modern day village that we spoke about uh, two weeks ago. Um, and, that's, and that's why we challenged you last week or two weeks ago, sorry, saying, have, go and ask families, what can I do to be part of your modern day village? It's the same thing as this, by doing those things that they will feel connected, feel supported, and that they are loved and cared for. Um, the way that God's also told us to love as well. Um, and so by ensuring that all parents and caregivers are uh, 
emotionally and physically and mentally and spiritually coping, that their well-being is positive, um, we know that they will then provide this uh, to their children. Um, do we have time to watch one of the videos? Okay, so we're going to just show you a video um, and we'll continue after that. Parents sometimes worry that they don't have the money, they don't have the time, uh, they can't buy their children fancy toys and computers and iPads and iPhones. What I like to tell them it is it's not those toys. Don't worry about having those little technologies and being able to afford those things. It's you. You're the most important thing in that child's life. We in China have a saying that you can see the old age of three and seven. 呃，而且呢，父母是孩子最好的老师，所以呢，一个父母的行为，他的情绪表达，他对事物的这种呃反应形式，都会影响孩子。Il bambini apprendono, imparano e costruiscono il sapere. Quindi insieme a te, insieme ai loro compagni, insieme ai altri bambini. E lo fanno se ti vedono coinvolta, se ti vedono divertirti con loro, se ti vedono interessata a quello che, che fanno e se vedono che questo interesse passa non solo dal bambino all'adulto, ma soprattutto dai bambini ai bambini. A bubboletta. A bubboletta per... Uah! Sì. It's the people in their lives. It's not, it's not so much the toys, the, the physical environment. But the most important ingredient is the people who interact on a regular basis with young children. Uh, what we call this serve and return interaction between babies and adults. A baby does something like a baby will smile or coo or fuss around and the adult responds to exactly what the baby's doing. And then as babies get older, even when they're still infants, they respond back, back and forth from the very beginning. So it's this back and forth responsiveness that's Absolutely critical for brain development. È mattina, la pimpa fa uno sbadiglio. Oh. Oh. Apre un occhio. È importante também notar che o investimento na primeira infância ele não requer gastos elevados. O que ele requer é uma interação entre pais e filhos. Né? Quer dizer, conversar com a criança, por exemplo fazer um carinho com a criança, brincar, é, né, aquela brincadeira que se faz de a, se esconder atrás de um livro ou se esconder atrás de uma panela, por exemplo, e depois mostrar o rosto, isso não custa dinheiro, custa saber que isso é realmente extremamente importante para o desenvolvimento infantil. Isso é amor, é você olhar para a criança e reconhecer que ela realmente está ali, que ela existe. Thanks, Ruth. So I know some of that was in a different language. I'm not sure if you could read the subtitles. So we will send the video uh, to you to be able to watch again, because what they say is that it doesn't have to cost money um, to play with a child, so that it's in those everyday interactions, whether it's peekaboo behind a book or behind a pot and pan, it's looking at a child and acknowledging their presence. Um, and it's just this interaction that shows love and that helps a baby grow in a healthy way. Um, so we will be sending those with you. Ruth, do you have anything else you'd like to share? I think this is such an important topic and I think it's something we can all be reminded about. I think about with my own children who are now even out of the first thousand days, how am I being responsive? 
how am I showing them love and care? And that human factor, even when I'm engaging with the adults in my life, how am I responding in a positive way towards them? And so I trust that this has been encouraging for you as you engage with parents, that we can, that the people feel seen, they feel heard, they feel loved. And where families are struggling, how can we part, be part of your village? How can we help you? How can we lift that load um, that you can engage better with your children? Some of the resources just to assist you, if you go onto our website, we have the resources under our resource tab. And if you go down to caring for families, um, we have a number of resources in there. But if you to specifically go into our Sukunya Lockdown Toolkit, we put down some resources around the nurturing care framework and responsive caregiving and love. And so if you had to scroll down towards information on the building blocks for children to thrive, in that question, we've got um, things around um, responsive caregiving and what does it mean to, what is responses, why does responsiveness matter? Um, and so engaging with our children, playing with our children, there's some ideas there for families to look at. Um, so I encourage you to go to those resources and have a look and see what could assist you as you try and support families so that they can engage well with their, with their families. But please do go have a look at our, our website because we have put a lot down there around uh, responsive caregiving and love that you could send to mum or dad, but also uh, for more information for yourselves. Um, and yeah, just to keep asking families how you can be their modern day village or what you can do to, to help them. Um, and it really is around it in the, our actions and our words and our thoughts that if we make positive and loving, then it will come through in the way we, we talk to, to mum and dad. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Um, I don't know if, does anybody want to say anything or we all good? Pastor Sia, you have anything you want to add? You're on mute, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> just, just one thing before we leave actually um, is the improvement that I see um, from the family with children in my church. Yeah, because there's one uh, child that um, now they could not understand, but through Sikunye, I could see that the, the child is, was actually ready for church and sometimes start singing, you know, but, but they, they could not recognize that, that she was singing. And now also, even when the pastor is in front uh, preaching, um, the, the child wants to see, want to be in an open space where um, you can see. But then um, when they realize that the children was actually getting ready for the service, but when they realize that now they prepare that child uh, first for, and, and, and get, get, get him ready for, for the church service. So it, there is a lot of improvement. Yes, indeed. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So the, the children are wanting to come to church. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And well done for that. That sounds like your church is having good reach into the families around you. And I like that I can see, are those your kids wandering around in the background as well? You sitting in, within your family home. Yeah, well, thank you, Pastor, for sharing that. Um, yeah, that's great to see how little children um, do. They feel the love of God and they, they see it in such a simple way in comparison to us adults. And um, it's really nice to see when they are the ones who are wanting to go to church and to be in that presence. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I don't know if um, Leslie or Matapelo or Mentona, Thor, I don't know if anybody has um, anything you want to add. Um, I see there's a few comments in the chat box. So thank you, Matapelo, for I'm glad you found the session was good and helpful. Um, and that's I think Mentona and yourself are going to look at the website. That's great. And if you have any other questions, please do let us know um, or message the Sekunya mobile and we will get back to you. And uh, we'll be sending out the PDF tomorrow. So when you see something come up saying the reflection of lunchtime conversations, there's a attachment to it or there's a link. That, and if you click on that, it takes you to the data-free PDF. 
And in that there's the links to the videos and the audios, but also all that we've spoken through today and all the resources um, that we can, we'll be sending to you. So do have a look for that and you can forward it on to other people. Um, so let me just close in prayer for us. Um, so Father, we come to you at the end of our lunchtime conversation. And I thank you, Lord, for this conversation where we can really look at the way that you teach us to love and give us ideas and inspiration of how we can love uh, families, how we can love caregivers um, and encourage them to love their children in the same way. I thank you, Lord, that there is no shame and that there is no guilt in you but that in you we find unconditional love and that we can come to you, Lord, when we are falling short and that you show us how to continue to love. Um, so I pray, Father, that as we leave today, that your word in 1 Corinthians will just ring true for us and we will learn to love more like you and to encourage families that they are loved like that by you. So that is how they can love, love their children. So we give this time to you and we just thank you, Lord, for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen.